Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. Rice water as a topical treatment. A lot of you had concerns. Bunny, I'm reading that rice water has arsenic in it. Is it poison that I'm putting onto my scalp? Also, some of you said, I've tried this treatment and I'm still having damage. My hair is not growing. It seems that it's worse than it was before. Can you help me? We are gonna talk about all of those topics and then some. That's all coming up next. <laughs> it's Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as we go into this topic. So there are a lot of videos that are on YouTube, people saying that this is poisonous water that you're putting onto your hair. Um, I even had someone contact me via Instagram that sent me a link. Look, this YouTuber is saying that this is all bacteria. There's arsenic, it's arsenic water. I've already tried this. I'm afraid. I don't know what to, to do. Should I contact my doctor? I don't know what's happening. Creating panic and some sorts of anxiety. One thing that I always encourage you to do when it comes to anything that you're applying to your body or ingesting is to always speak to a medical professional, dermatologist, scientists such as myself, people who have accolades that can answer these questions properly okay so one thing that i want to get into before we talk about anything else is to understand and answer the question what is hair it seems like a very simple question but not many people can answer it we spend tons of money on products time energy slapping things onto our hair and scalp not really understanding how that product or how that treatment applies to our texture and to our hair well hair is composed of proteins mainly alpha keratin and keratin is something that you hear a lot in products so what encourages people to use topical treatments. When I say topical treatments, think of it simply as something you are putting on the top of your hair, a treatment that is not happening from the inside and reflecting out. So rice water is a protein treatment. It is something that you can use topically on your hair to promote your hair being strengthened and if the hair is strengthened then of course that will promote the opportunity for your hair to grow so that is why this has become viral over the past couple of years because people are using it and they're posting their success with rice water but then there are concerns with poison is it poison is it arsenic etc so that was number one understanding what is hair now that we know what hair is let's move forward usually when people notice changes in their hair they go to protein treatments because of course we have weakened protein now we want to restore what is lost to promote hair growth but the slight error in that is there is a such thing called protein overload putting too much protein on your hair masks protein shampoo protein conditioner protein leave-in protein this protein that and that can create problems that is when we go into which i'll show offset to the side understanding low porosity and high porosity this is something, especially us naturals, that we need to learn and we need to understand. When you have high porosity, which I'll kind of show as a hand demonstration, okay? When you have high porosity, think of this microscope 
microscopically, okay? You have this strand of hair that's ready just to ingest any type of product, oil, treatments onto the hair, and it is ready to absorb high porosity, high welcoming to things that you're putting on that strand of hair. So you have protein that gets infused, a nice treatment, a nice mask, and that hair would just and just absorb that and say thank you, leaving this nice, strong strand here having high porosity. Now, low porosity, I'll change my hand direction. This is not allowing moisture treatments anything into it in water it has a low chance of absorbing this treatment that you're putting on to the strand so what happens is here's protein but instead of it being absorbed it stays on the top of it and then you're adding more things and more things and then we have breakage so that hair is not absorbing anything, causing this traffic of, of, of cluster of items that is on your scalp, meaning low porosity, a low chance of it absorbing and intaking whatever treatments that you're putting on it. So that's how many people who have low porosity, they use a greenhouse effect. They apply some sort of treatment, they apply a, pa a plastic cap or a bag or a shower cap to allow the hair to take its time to open a little bit to allow that absorption. So let me go to my notes here. So you have not moisturized properly and hair with way too much protein. So let me go into the differences. When hair is not moisturized properly, um, you this is how you know the difference. You will moisturize your hair um, and you'll notice, you'll use a product and you'll notice that the hair and its behavior will change. It will absorb it, it will change, and it will take that on with no, no problem. That just lets you know that your hair was just not moisturized. Now hair with too much protein, you've tried adding some type of moisturizer and there's no changes. Um, the effect is little to none. Uh, it may look even worse. Your hair snaps off easily, breakage. Um, the hair can feel straw-like and stiff, lifeless, brittle, no shine compared to the way that it was before. So there are no changes with whatever that you're putting onto your hair. That is protein overload and also signs that you may have low porosity, okay? So then you ask the question, I have this buildup, it's not working, no matter what I use, can this be reversed, can it be helped? Yes, yes, of course. So the first thing is to slowly wing off and minimize a lot of your products that have protein in it. Because what we wanna do is we wanna strip away and get rid of all of the protein buildup that is on your hair. So make sure you validate the products that you're using and does it have a lot of protein in it? And if it does, let's slowly wing off all of the products that have a lot of protein in it that are causing you protein overload. So focus on using moisturizers that are adding protein. And what you want to do is you want to use, uh, make sure, and things that have uh, protein is things that have wheat, soy, protein, silk protein, keratin, oat flour, amino acids, it will say th these things. And coconut oil is the same way. You'll hear a lot of natural say, oh, I can't use coconut oil. It damaged my hair. That is because they had protein overload or they had low porosity, not allowing the product to be absorbed into that hair, hair strand, okay? I hope that makes sense. And I hope I'm not going too quickly for you guys. I'm trying to say everything as clearly as possible. So you once you wing off of that, you want to use shampoos that are neutral, neutralizing shampoos and conditioners that are giving you moisture but not adding so much protein. So that is how you can get your hair back healthy. It doesn't mean that your hair doesn't grow. It doesn't mean that it will never grow. All it means is that 
evaluating what you're using on your hair and how much you're using on your hair. Now let's talk about people who have who had negative effects of rice water. The same thing. Rice water is a protein treatment that is added topically on to the hair. Some people have posted videos and saying it took my hair out. It didn't grow. If you're applying that on there, like I said, microscopically, you have something on top that is not allowing any penetration onto that strand. It dries, it goes into that, and you have break, it breaks off. It's not doing anything to help promote growth and replenishing keratin that you may have received that would have been weakened. I hope that makes sense. Now going into what someone showed me in this on this link of a particular youtuber that said look look at this rice water under a microscope look at all this bacteria look at all of this poison that you're putting onto your head to an untrained eye it looks like there's a lot of creepy disgusting things going on under a microscope with rice water to understand bacteria and there are thousands of different families of bacteria on your scalp as we speak. They are not causing you any harm, okay? This is bacteria that will exist and won't go away. It's in your shampoo, it's in yogurt, it's in your deodorant, it's, it's everywhere. Bacteria is a part of life. And I looked at the video and I noticed that the slide for one, the intensity of the microscope wasn't strong enough to pinpoint what areas or what things on the plate were specifically bacteria. You had a mixture of oils, you had a mixture of dirt. There were so many different things on that slide that we noticed. Know that there are thousands of bacteria on your head as we speak, okay? There's bacteria in yogurt. There's, it's everywhere. So I don't want people to go into this panic of these are all the icky things that are on my scalp and that rice water is doing. When that rice water ferments, anything that subtles, that sits, is going to create bacteria. Perfect example. When you see a water fountain and you think, oh, that's really pretty, it looks really nice. It's not for the visual and it being pretty, it's actually promoting and encouraging not for bacteria to settle and be still. Have you ever went past a creek or you're on the highway and you pass some water and you're like, oh, that smells, what is that? That is bacteria because it's been allowed to settle. They tell you to get rid of water. Maybe that may be around your house that's just sitting, sitting still, still water because then mosquitoes will get on it and bacteria will grow. So anything encouraging the movement of water and not giving an opportunity for bacteria to get nice and cozy, we create that circulation of water through a fountain. So when you're fermenting, rice water, yes, there will be bacteria that will have opportunity to have a party in that water, but it's not bacteria that is harmful to your skin, okay? And it's not something that you should have a panic about. Now let's get into the poison. Understand that the word poison scientifically, you really have to be careful with and understanding that wording. Toxicity is the true word that we want to focus on. The arsenic, okay, that is found in rice, white rice, okay, is very minimum, minimal. It's unfortunate that rice absorbs very well and rice is absorbing anything that man is placing into the soil. Okay, so arsenic, is a natural element. What makes it get to the point of, wow, it's even in the food, is the pesticides that man is putting into the soil that we're ingesting. Don't panic, there's arsenic in your apples, there's arsenic in a lot of stuff, okay? But understand this, okay? It is, according to the National Scientific Library, Environmentally, protein 
And the Agents of the Arsenic is 10 parts BBC, B, uh, PBB, which is parts per billion, okay? So if you think about a sugar cube in an Olympic sized pool of the amount that we're ingesting. Now, is arsenic, man made arsenic, something that, you know, I. That should be in food. I mean, it shouldn't even be in there any, anyhow. It should be only natural arsenic that we're ingesting. But because of pesticides and everything like that, it is traceable in some foods. Is it something to be panicked about? No. So when you make your rice water, know that if there are any elements of arsenic, your skin is a beautiful creation and has its own design to where if you got any elements of arsenic in your body that there would be a chain of command of things of what to do with this foreign thing that's in your body and you would urinate that out it is such a very minimal amount that it is not harmful poisonous or toxic to your body so please understand that this is not poisonous water it's not arsenic water okay this is something that is on your scalp that you are using that is not causing harm if you've had negative effects from white rice water it is possible that you have protein overload or low porosity hair that is where people have had the negative effects of that now if you have low porosity hair you can still use rice water only the difference would be instead of letting the rice water ferment for a day or two you would only let the rice water ferment for maybe 15 20 minutes or 30 minutes max because you only need that minimal potency of fermentation from the rice water. And when you apply it to your, your hair, topically, you can only maybe leave it in there maybe 15, 20 minutes because you don't want too much topically on your hair because you have low porosity, okay? I know that's a lot of science, but I hope it's all making sense. Now on to the next topic. So for those of you who are saying, I don't even wanna take a chance, Bunny, I don't care if it is one PPB. I don't care if it's a very small amount of even just just anything from pesticides been in my hair. I don't even want. I don't even want to take a chance. I don't even want to go there. That's fine. There are other protein treatments that are natural. So let's talk about some of those. I have some of them written down. So we have yogurt. Okay, dairy products have protein and lactic acid that acts as a cleanser, while the fat in the yogurt is the moisturizer. So you're not having any risk with that. Egg mask, um, this is good for heat damaged hair because the eggs have enzymes to help with the damage. We have avocado that you can use. You can mash up some good avocado and that fatty content that's in avocado for heat damaged hair and breakage is absolutely wonderful. So you do have natural options to use for your hair okay so now moving on to the next topic if you do decide to do a rice water treatment i do encourage you to always dilute the water that you fermented that information is in the other video which i will place in the comments below so you can get a little bit more information about it but i really wanted to make this video because i didn't want anybody to be afraid or or misled by certain things that they have may have seen in articles or on youtube with people who don't have the science backgrounds to really help you understand what it's doing and how it's behaving and how it's allowing this growth to happen, okay? If you have any other questions, please let me know. I will place links in the comics uh, comments as well from other medical professionals make sure when you go to those, vi those videos place in the comments official bunny sent me here just so we can encourage communications with others that had questions as well that want double confirmation of what i'm saying okay so also 
For those of you who have low porosity hair, I know you're probably wondering, how do I know I have it? How can I test it? Now, there are several methods to see if you have low porosity hair. You can, on freshly washed hair, take strands from different areas of your hair because different areas of your hair have different textures, correct? And you want to make sure that's as clean as possible and to place in a glass of water and after a few minutes you want to see if the hair is floating or if the hair sinks that's one way to find out but there are several different methods that you can try if a hair floats for a certain amount of time that lets you know that that hair is not allowing that absorption of water okay or moisture high porosity over a period of time is just going to sink down to the bottom i encourage that hair to be as clean as possible because if you have oils on it if you have a conditioner on it that may weigh the hair down and pull it down to the bottom not giving you kind of an accurate idea but in my opinion i do feel that if you notice your hair does, it takes a long time to get wet. It's not absorbing any products. You don't see any changes even after you've added some really, really good products. It is either a sign of protein overload or low porosity. There's so much more that I could talk about, but this video would be an hour. I tried to sum it up as a cliff notes as much as possible in this video, but I honestly felt that if I posted that treatment onto my page, that I it was my responsibility to give information about it and to give people calmness about it and learning about it and thinking, wow, she posted this video and something that can cause me harm. So I felt it was my responsibility to give more information about it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. And I don't know if you noticed, but I subscribe to whomever subscribes to me. This is a movie and television show review channel. I recently added a health and wellness playlist, but that is the platform of the channel make sure to check out awesome movie and television show reviews on the playlist no need to dig around and go to there and just have a good time binge watch comment do you agree do you not agree um, and if so post sources so we can have a nice healthy debate okay have fun my um video with the follow-up of the rice water treatment will be up in a few weeks i promise that the one month follow-up will come up we haven't reached that one month mark but i will post those results it's coming up soon peace and blessings till next time bye